look at what the Soviet Union did, you look at what they do in North Korea, you look at what the Chinese have done, uh, you don't even want to get near anything like that. Everybody thinks, oh, well, you know, this country's so stable and we have a democracy and we're always going to be that way. I mean, we're the oldest surviving test of a democracy in history. We're vigilant and we have a constitution that protects rights and I don't think we should be giving rights away so easily. And some people will say, well, you know, there is no right to privacy in the Constitution. Well, there's not. It's been interpreted that way. And ironically, you know, Roe v. Wade in interpreted, 1973, the abortion case interpreted that you have a right to privacy. Um, and I'm not ready to, to give that away, and some are. I don't know. Welcome to Maryland. When a series of violent crimes were captured on video cameras, the legislature considered adding audio surveillance to its fleet of buses operating across the state. The microphones can help to stop crime, but they can also pick up every detail of conversation along the ride. In sponsoring the microphone bill, Delegate Melvin Stooks unleashed a statewide debate over private speech in public places. If you were sitting in your home, at your table, in your bathroom, in your bedroom, your den or whatever, you should be expected to be able to have a private conversation. But you, when you get on public transportation, which at certain times of the day, you will be shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, breath to breath. How can you expect to have a private conversation? It is definitely not. It's a question the courts have struggled over for a century. In 1967, the Supreme Court interpreted the Fourth Amendment's prohibition against unreasonable searches as a constitutional right to privacy. Writing the majority opinion in Katz versus the United States, Justice Potter Stewart declared, what a person knowingly exposes to the public, even in his own home or office, is not a subject of Fourth Amendment protection. But what he seeks to preserve as private, even in an area accessible to the public, may be constitutionally protected. Justice Stewart's decision says our right to privacy doesn't matter where you are, it only depends on what you expect. So the question is, do you expect any privacy on a public bus? You on a bus? <laughs> it's, it's not private, even without the camera. It's almost an invasion of privacy, but we're on a crowded bus. You wouldn't normally talk about things that are private on the bus. By going on the bus, you're accepting that that's one of the exchanges that you're making and I think that's a reasonable one. So you wouldn't be like talking about your like social security number on a bus in public. I choose uh, privacy. It doesn't bother me because I'm not doing anything to disturb anyone. Because I don't like letting uh, everybody know my business. I'm fine with it because if it's going to help, there's a lot of idiots on the bus sometimes. <laughs> the invasion of privacy is never worth it to stop crime because <laughs> It's a tough question, actually. In trading privacy for security, the citizens of Baltimore are following the national trend towards greater acceptance of public surveillance. But surveillance was never the citizen's choice to make. After the state assembly rejected three audio surveillance bills, the Transit Authority, acting on advice from the Attorney General, began activating microphones on hundreds of buses across the state. But before they could be switched on, the state had to overcome Maryland's restrictive wiretapping law. In order to record anyone, the law requires the consent of all parties. The Transit Authority dealt with this restriction by posting warning signs on every bus. It's a solution that's being replicated in cities all across America. Now we're in this new stage when we have drone technology and audio taping technology that can uh, do voice matches, that can pull things out, and it's, it's a whole new world now. And the question is, what do we want this world to look like? And if legislators don't st start defining the parameters, government will define the parameters. And the government's parameters are, there are no parameters. We can do whatever we want. His putting in a bill to stop it, we had, that bill had to be killed. I went and testify this time before the Senate about what was occurring across the country. What makes Maryland so different that you want to stop and take a tool away from me? I work there. I deal with this every day. 
I deal with this complaint. I feel the pain of these people. I go out and I ride. This whole slippery slope theory that, that some people are concerned about is, is, I mean, they've said and demonstrated this is what we want to do. We want to expand it to every single public ridership uh, arena that we can. I want to hear his side of the story. It was just simply a respect from one colleague to another, one side of the hall to another. And I said, what you got is misinformation and you're taking misinformation and you're trying to use this to stop something that is not illegal. It was a very intense debate and, and people were, there was nobody who was on the fence on this issue. There were people like, oh yeah, what's the big deal? And I'm like, are, are you kidding me? I've got the truth on my side. Here is the letter from our attorney general that this is not illegal. What more? He's the attorney for all of the state of Maryland. What more do I need? In the end, Delegate Stukes needed nothing more. Senator Broshan's bill to bar the Transit Authority from conducting audio surveillance in Maryland lost by a single vote on the Senate floor. This is a right to privacy, and I, I just think some people in the legislature, in the Senate, they just didn't get it, you know? I mean, that's a pretty big deal. I'm just going to say we prevailed in the end. It was a hard struggle. Maryland won the right to record its citizens in public places, a victory for security. But while the state is free to record you, don't think about turning your camera on the state. The same wiretapping law that allows law enforcement to record citizens of Maryland makes it impossible for citizens to record law enforcement. Be fair, we turn that off. It's illegal to videotape anybody's voice or anything else against the law in the state of Maryland. Do me a favor, please turn The Transit Authority denied Reason's request to enter this command center where Baltimore surveillance is monitored. And after attempting to photograph a few surveillance cameras inside of a city bus, the bus was stopped and the driver forced me to leave. Can you get off the bus, please? What, what's please, the matter? You got to get off the bus. What, what's the matter? Please, no, because you move from, see, you're making me paranoid. Please leave the bus. I don't feel oh, comfortable oh, oh, either. Is it the you camera? Leave. I mean, you're just doing, doing the Lord too much. And they said when people start doing the Lord, you have to watch out. Knowing how nervous Baltimore bus drivers can react, I decided to leave the bus. I gotta go. But by failing to get anyone's consent, even inside of a bus that was listening to all of us with cameras, I wondered, did I violate the state wiretapping law? I'm sorry, sir. The future is that if legislators like me don't say, no, this is inappropriate, uh, bring it to, the, to legislative bodies in different states and, and nationally, that, this, that the government's gonna think that this is the norm. There's a lot of catching up that government has to do to try to protect its citizens. Thank the Lord for the cameras that bought so head up the on the on the on the, um, on the marathon. If those cameras didn't exist, uh, these guys might still be out there. Uh, I think it clearly crosses the line, and, and we better find a line now because if we don't, the government will find that line for us, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. They're defining the line, and government shouldn't be defining the line. That the people who government represents should be defining the line.